Silver Slaughter. What is really going on here? Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. November has been quite the month for silver and gold stackers, hasn't it? Silver was slaughtered over the past few weeks. My silver spot price prediction failed miserably. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I made my $30 and 30 day prediction for silver at the end of October. And though the initial rise in November looked like it would continue, I was wrong. What can I say? Goes to show you, right? That Yankee doesn't have a crystal ball. These predictions I make are simply my educated guesses and primarily for entertainment purposes on my YouTube channel. They're a lot of fun. I like making them, okay? So <laughs> you can always tease me when I'm wrong too. I have no problem with that. But what really is going on here? Why has silver and gold just plummeted, at least the spot price, when I thought just the opposite was going to happen? Well, in my opinion, there was a one-two punch that occurred in November, followed up by a haymaker that clobbered precious metals. What was the first punch? The vaccine. I mean, come on, who honestly, honestly saw that coming? <laughs> right after the election. I didn't see it. Now, we don't know, you know, what the, the timing of the uh, vaccine distribution is going to be like. We don't know the willingness of people to take it, the side effects. We don't know what the mid or long term effectiveness is going to be. We just don't know. But what we do know is that that announcement and the subsequent news cycles just took the world by storm. And it resulted in tremendous optimism. Silver and gold, well, optimism doesn't play well with them usually. They are bad news plays, usually. And this was great news. That was the first punch. The second punch <laughs> was Janet Yellen, our former Federal Reserve Chair that put the dove in dovish monetary policy appears to be taking the reins of the U.S. Treasury. In that role, she's going to be able to fulfill the wishes of liberal Democrats and modern monetary theory proponents. Need a few more trillion dollars worth of currency? No problem. She will streamline the issuance of U.S. Treasuries and the Fed will just gobble them all up. No more pretense of independence is needed by the Fed. The private institution, and that's what it is, the Federal Reserve is a private institution, but that, 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 that private institution that Jerome Powell leads is going to work lockstep with the federal institution of the U.S. Treasury. Guys, currency is going to flow like water, like we've never seen before, and the MMT crowd is going to cheer. I mean, the equities markets already cheered it. They love this. And gold and silver just retreated hard. There's no fear of delayed stimulus now. No way. No fear that the markets won't be propped up. Ah, infinitum. So that was the second punch. Janet Yellen being, you know, targeted as the uh, U.S. Treasury Secretary. What was the third punch? The haymaker. <laughs> I think it was the election. Now, I'm going to tread lightly, but I'm going here, people, okay? I always thought that if the election results were more definitive and a Supreme Court battle was not quite as likely, silver and gold could hit the skids. Now, at the risk of getting completely flamed in the comments, which I was <laughs> on a few videos ago, I know people are going to say, it's not over, Yankee. Biden's not the president yet. Come on, man. All right. Let's all take a deep breath, okay? I know the recounts. 
and the lawsuits and the certifications, uh, the, the, the ballot casting by the electors. None of that's completed yet. I know that. And who knows? Maybe history will be made and maybe Trump's team will pull the political rabbit out of their hats. I don't know. Maybe they'll be able to prove the widespread fraud. And maybe, maybe it won't be Joe Biden on the steps of the U.S. Capitol building in January. I'd love it if he didn't take the oath of office. Okay, that said, the mere mention that Donald Trump was allowing a transition to proceed, just the mention of it, okay, just the mention that that Trump would leave the White House if they lost their appeals and if they couldn't prove their case, just that was enough to spur the surge in the markets and hammer silver and gold. You see, the fear was going to be that this could turn into a constitutional crisis. And it was huge. And maybe, (laughs) yes, maybe, you know, it it might, you know, still. Actually, I have two people in our community doing a gold wager over the final outcome of the presidential election. And they elected me, pun intended, (laughs) uh, to be the arbiter, the, the holder of the gold, so to speak. So that's going to be fun. More on that in a future video. But now let's just move past why this happened to gold and silver and dive into the response, okay? The response from investors and so forth. In fact, there are three kinds of silver and gold players, I think, and their responses were quite distinct. The first one are the traders. There's not a lot of them, relatively speaking, but these are the ones that are gambling, okay, on silver. And they they just want to make a quick buck. And I think they panicked. Think about it. It's risk on right now for these people. Precious metals just don't have a place in their Robin Hood accounts anymore. Okay, gold, silver, the, the, the ETFs, GLD and SLV, I think they were jettisoned right away. SLV may have been a hot move for these lemmings back in August, but not now. As I said, it's risk on. They want out of lower risk asset classes. They don't want to hedge the U.S. economy. They want all in on the stock market and gamble that it's the roaring 20s. Happy days are here again. Cue the music. Everything is looking up. If you're one of them, enjoy the ride. Just remember how the last roaring 20s ended. Okay? Those are the traders. The second group, I think it's the bulk of those holding gold and silver, are the investors. And they're nervous. They've had it in their minds that with physical silver and gold, they can make some profit in dollars. Okay, They don't like what's going on. They want to see some ROI. And this drop in November really hurt. Are you in this camp? Are you wondering if you hitched your financial horse to the wrong post in your portfolio? I think a lot of people did. And I think some bailed out. They were the weak hands that that lost their grip and threw in the towel. That's the second group. The third group, the one I'm in, the insurers. We think differently. Those who do not panic like traders and who do not worry like investors. We look at physical precious metals primarily as insurance. And, and just like a, 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 an elderly person seeing their term life insurance policy end without actually ever needing it, we're happy, okay? <laughs> kind of like when you're happy, you didn't need the shipping insurance on the package you sent through the mail. I wasn't sad I arrived safely at my Thanksgiving destination last week and my car insurance went unused. Get it? In the same way, we should be relieved that a fiscal and monetary SHTF scenario hasn't occurred yet. 
and we haven't needed our silver and gold. Guys, it will happen. I'm convinced of it. And I and, and I think we're going to really need this. But not yet. And think about it. This gives us more time to build our stacks. I have, you know, quite a few stacking goals that I haven't yet reached. I have a portfolio I haven't finished rebalancing where precious metals plays an increasingly critical role. Folks, the dangers haven't passed. The only thing that has fundamentally changed with respect to the real U.S. and world economies is that it, it's, it's gotten worse. 2021 isn't going to be nirvana, people. I sure hope it's better than 2020, but we know that the dollar is dying due to the wanton money printing and crazy lust many people have with socialism. The dollar's reserve currency status is still eventually going to end. And we in the smallest of demographics don't look to silver and gold to get us rich. We don't care as much about the price of silver in terms of dollars, but in terms of goods and services. We think the likelihood of a 1930s depression combined with 1970s style inflation, better known as stagflation, is on the horizon. And silver and gold is a must-have asset. Regardless of the unfounded exuberance in the stock market right now, and let me tell you, it, it's through the roof. People think it is going to break 40000 50000 It's just going to go up and never come down. But regardless of that, I know for a fact, and you should too, that right now, buyers of silver and gold far outnumber sellers when it comes to physical precious metals, the physical stuff, not the paper stuff, okay? We stackers are still holding on by our fingertips as we slowly climb this obscene mountain of debt our nation is creating. We are not letting go. No way. Unfortunately, when we finally get to the top, the view's not going to be a beautiful one, people. It's going to be a vista of economic collapse. People around us work with, they're all going to struggle to survive. We won't be thrilled to get to the mountaintop, but we will be relieved that we persevered with the climb, that we kept buying this stuff on each pullback, and that we never gave up on silver and gold. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. You know, give me a thumbs up if you appreciate it. Tell me what your thoughts are about the recent drop in silver and gold spot price. Also, tell me what you think about my $30 and 30 day prediction. You can give me a hard time. That's fine. It's okay. I deserve it, but it was fun to make. All right. So thank you so much for watching and I hope your day is a-okay.